I'm going to show you guys how to beat the business management minigame in Yakuza Like a Dragon. But the first thing I should mention, because I know some people probably have a problem with this, is the first uh, place that you go to do that is right here. That's Ichiban Confection. So when you go through the story, you unlock the side, this like minigame. And then after they kick you out, basically, they force you to go into the story. They don't tell you where it is. And so I had to, I stumbled upon it finally later on in my playthrough. And it is right there. So at, whenever you want to go back, whenever it lets you go back, uh, that is where you go to continue the mini game. So that's the first thing I want to mention. The other thing is, once you get about halfway through the mini game, you move to this building. In case you move and then you don't know where it put you or something you forgot. Uh, this is the second building that you go to. I've already beaten it, but I'm going to go through and explain to you the tips and tricks that you can use to go through. So I'm going to explain what happens from beginning to end because I remember it pretty, pretty vividly. So let's go up here and let's take a look at my end game uh, management game, whatever. Uh, it's also an insane source of money. I just want to say I'm going to spoil it right now. When you beat it, then every time you get through a shareholder meeting, you get 3 million yen. So if you can beat this thing, you have infinite money afterwards, basically. Uh, okay, so the first thing that you're going to want to do on your first like playthrough, when you're first starting off, you just started this mini game. Uh, put all your money into Ichiban, Ichiban Confections. If you want to, you can even, on your first day, take a bank loan of 10 million yen. To speed up the process uh, that'll help a lot put all of it into each bond confections uh next thing i want to talk about is okay assigning employees pretty straightforward assign take someone swap them out for someone else uh make sure you got in the beginning you'll want the chicken on this third one for the ribbon icon and you only have three employees it's pretty straightforward you'll put granny as this and then the other person as this whatever uh all right, so then the stats, I should explain the stats. So down at the bottom there, bottom left, there is product, service, and notability. So what happens is when you upgrade the sales volume, let me go to upgrades. Uh, when you upgrade the sales volume, it will, those little bars will all move to the right, to, or not always all of them, but they'll move to the right. And if they go beyond what you can offer in product, service, and notability, then you'll take a hit to your income. So if you just boost your sales volume over and over and over again, but your product service and notability, you don't take make those go up with it, uh, you'll actually end up making like the same or less money because uh, your employees and your business can't keep up with your new sales volume. So you always want to try to keep those close, but you can always go over a little. Like if you're slightly in like short, just a little bit short of the sales volume upgrade, just go ahead and upgrade the sales volume. You'll still make more. It doesn't shave off too much uh, if you're close. So, yeah, in the beginning, the very first thing is just work on Ichiban Confections until you can get that sales volume to 7 out of 7 of those little icons down at the bottom right. Uh, and just try to do whatever you can to keep up with that. It's pretty easy with Ichiban Confections. It's, you honestly don't even have to have good employees. Uh, the first businesses are not worth it. Let me show you the first businesses. Uh, first businesses were... Yeah, right through here and they're not they're just not even worth it honestly you just you buy ichiban confections and then after uh, you upgrade each bonds confections after you're done upgrading that it, you really can just if you have want to you can buy one but it might even be worth it just to save your money until you get to the next ranking tier and then it'll unlock more businesses and then get a better one and just save your money it, depending on how it's going to work out for you so uh, yeah, then at that point you want to get a better business. I'll go into more details about it in just a minute, but first I'm going to say this, the overall strategy. Then you get one of the better businesses down here and then keep going until you get to the next ranking. And then every time you get to a new ranking, you'll unlock more businesses. And then eventually you start getting better businesses. You sell your old ones if you have all of them already and, uh, just keep on cycling up to better buildings. And then the last two ranking tiers, whatever, you know, 25 and below. Uh, you unlock all these good ones down here, and eventually you want your businesses to just be all these. Uh, when picking these, it's good to see, like, here's an example of a decent one to pick uh, for that er, that period of time. I, this one's not worth it anymore for me, but this would be, like, rank 50 to 25, I think. Uh, this is a decent one because there's six upgrades to the sales volume that you'll see at the bottom. So there's a lot of potential to grow the total yen that it brings in. 
but also there's a decent number of upgrades for product service and notability so like there's a lot of potential to upgrade it just with the upgrades not having to get super employees because if you get super employees that can be a pain sometimes to wait later on later on you can re once you move to the better place it's easier to get good employees but you know it's still sometimes tough to get good employees and like a bad an example of a bad one is like okay this one can only upgrade a sales volume four times and service can only be upgraded twice so you're gonna have to use some kind of really good employees in order to get this one to be decent and you know so it's good to look at that like this you want to see a lot of upgrades for sales volume to be available and a decent number of upgrades for the other things to be available the worst is when you see like two or three like three sales volume upgrades and like no upgrades on the other stuff it's like there's not a lot of high end so it's not going to be a good late game property to have uh and then yeah once you have them all you're making a fortune at the end okay so and then at the end you just ride it out uh, I'm going to make a guide specifically for how to beat the shareholder meetings, by the way. If that's what you came for, look at the description below. I should have it hopefully by the time you watch this as the first thing in the description because the shareholders meetings is a totally different topic. It's just going to take a whole other five minutes or something to explain it because it's actually a really complicated mini minigame. Uh, and I'll explain that, how to, how to do that one perfectly. Uh, employees. So you want to check recruit every cycle like every time you go through a business day you want to hit recruit and see what you got but after you've been in a ranking for long enough it's basically the same people over and over again and eventually you'll get burnt out until you move on to the next cycle uh and then if you go to the employees so you can go in here and you can give them bonuses you can train them and you can promote them so the main thing that you're going to want to focus on in the early game is uh just upgrading the Ichiban Confections, but eventually once you get to the point that you do need employees to fill in the gaps, like the, just the upgrades and spending money on upgrades is not cutting it, then you wanna look at your employees and you wanna see who looks like they're gonna grow into something decent. Because uh, there are a lot of employees, especially at the beginning, that have no stats and they just don't gain stats. Like they just are terrible the whole time. So uh, you wanna see someone who looks like they have a little bit of potential in something. And a trick you can do to check is uh let me find someone who's not all the way to their level okay like so this guy he's like so you can look to see like will they maybe gain stats when they level up well it's one of five you can just look to see and you go okay when this guy gains four more levels he literally gains no stats down there on the left uh, over there on the left side of his card and so you're like okay chances are if i promote this guy and keep upgrading him he's not gonna gain very many stats if any like heck I'll, I'll even check here promote him and what would it get okay so if i am level 10 so he does start gaining stats but you can just tell from the first five if he gains almost nothing on the first five he's gonna gain almost nothing the whole way through so it, it, that's a good way to rule out is it worth upgrading someone is it not worth upgrading them with the training courses or just leveling it in general also here's how you terminate them in case you're wondering how to fire them it's that fourth button uh but yeah so promoting them is what you allows them to get to the next level or next levels i should say but you gotta be careful because not only does it increase their salary but here's something that you really should be aware of it increases how much it costs to give them bonuses which you will have to do so if i go to someone who is where's the chicken chicken's a senior director okay that's the highest promotion you can i can't promote chicken anymore chicken's best employee i have uh but yeah senior director once you get to like you promote enough times to max level these bonuses cost eight hundred thousand, a million six hundred thousand, two million eight hundred thousand, and four million. So, you want to be careful with uh, promoting them. You only want to promote them if you actually think it's going to be worth it eventually. Once you get to the very end where I am, it doesn't matter anymore. I my this business makes so much yen that I don't even I don't even worry about it. If I want to promote someone, I just promote someone. But if you're in the early and mid game, you can really screw yourself with promotions. It's actually a really dangerous thing to do in the early early stages uh if you do it too much but yeah so that's that and then another thing that you're going to check for is you see uh to the right side of their card like this person has a little green shopping basket and then like a yellowy orange looking kind of kind of devious looking face and then the number two well that devious looking face is how happy they are right now with the business or whatever like here's someone who he's like kind of fallen out he's like uh I'm not so enthused anymore basically at this point and the, the ideal one is the green one they're super motivated they're completely motivated well 
as you go through the days, you're going to have to give them bonuses to keep that up. That is, that's the only way to keep it up is to give them bonuses. So, uh, once you get to the mid game, especially what I end up doing is just, I just go, um, especially once you get lazy, you just go through all four cycles and now it's the share time for the shareholder meeting, go to the boardroom. Okay. We got nine people who are neutral, nine people who are okay. And 16 people who are, you know, doing great. All right, well, let's go fix them up. And I do this every time before the shareholder meeting and you want to do it before the shareholder meeting because then it'll turn this middle one into a plus 10%. So it's a win-win and you're gonna have to do it eventually or else if you let them go down, they'll basically threaten to leave and you'll there's a chance they'll threaten to leave and then you'll have to permanently increase their salary and that's a dangerous game to play. So at the end of every four business cycles, just go ahead and go to employees and fix them all up. Uh, you can just go, you can check to see like, okay, this, what it'll do, it'll do nothing, this, okay, it'll bring them to that one and this, it'll bring them to green. Uh, once you get to a point where it doesn't really matter too much about you know pinching pennies, uh, this, this simple one is if it's gray, do the third one. If it's if they look like the they're they're mad basically the one after gray, which is even worse than gray, then just go ahead and give them that you know the the most expensive one. And if it's obviously if it's the one where they're furious, then again give them the most expensive one. And that and that should just jump them to green. So gray, I'm gonna give them the third one. Takes them to green. Uh, the like all like they're I don't know what I don't even know what to call that orange I guess. I'm just gonna call that orange orange one then i just give them uh the second one and that's just it so orange second one here's another orange get the second one orange second one gray i'm gonna get the third one and just so on and so forth you want to fix them up before the shareholder meeting and that'll make the shareholder meeting not as crucial i mean you still have to be able to beat it decently but you don't have to you know be perfect if you start off with bonus points Okay, and now everybody's happy. If you want to double check, go to your boardroom and you can see, okay, all 34 people are happy. Nobody's on, nobody's anything but, you know, perfectly happy. Uh, let's see what else is there to go before. I'm going to go through this one at a time. Let's, let's, before I get to the complicated boardroom part, let's go to debts. Uh, there's three different lenders and a loan shark for emergencies. I'm just gonna say right now, if you get to the point that you have to use a loan shark or a cash advance, you've probably messed up really bad. So uh, like it should never get to the point that you have to use those. I personally beat the game just fine, only taking bank loans. And one time on the very first cycle, I also took a money lender loan uh, just to get even more to upgrade Ichiban Confection. So, you know, very first days on this, when you're first starting off and they give you full control, finally, I would recommend doing bank loan and this is the biggest money lender loan and just upgrade Ichiban Confections fully. And then once it's paid off, uh, you will like i don't know be making a ton of money you'll be able to catch up and everything's fine don't quote me on those exact numbers check for yourself make sure it's gonna you know pay for it and not uh make you have to get the point of a loan shark i'm pretty sure you should be okay doing it on the first cycle but then after the first cycles just use the bank if you need loans and just be patient like you're, you don't need to rush it it's not worth the risk and if you want to you know try to rush a little bit use money lender don't even bother getting to the point of cash advances they don't even offer that much yen it's just like i don't know not even worth get to that unless you're not following this guide and just totally have messed up uh okay and then once you get later on you can just keep employees by the way like i just if i see a good employee i just recruit them and i just have them forever and i don't even it doesn't even matter but in the early game you might actually have to watch about employee wages for a little while so be careful that in the beginning make sure you actually have employees that you're using and only have one or two or something overstocked if necessary. Okay, final most, I don't know, sort of most important part, just an important part. So the board meeting. On the left, your net worth. Don't don't really worry about the stuff on the left. You just gotta be able to beat the mini game, okay? Uh, if you can beat the mini game, it, it doesn't matter what you start at. Uh, like that, I'll, have, I'll have a separate video for the mini game uh, where it's just about tips and tricks and hints and cheats for the mini game, and we'll focus 100% on that. But I will really quickly go over prep for the mini game, which is your team. And I'll probably go over this again in the mini game tutorial video. Uh, so, what you want for a team on the on the mini game is charisma, but then you also don't want the command cost to be too high. Uh, okay, I'm trying to think over how to start. For starters, you want one green one blue and one red what i mean is you see like granny here up at the top left of her card if so it's like a green icon with a stack of cash it looks like on it like cartoony kind of chicken has a blue icon with a calculator 
in it. And then red has a red, like anyone with red has a red icon with like uh, what represents a person. Well, that is really important because in the minigame, they actually have an icon, if you notice, to the top right. And what that means is red beats green, green beats blue, and blue beats red. So what happens is if you're fighting an opponent who's red, you want to attack them with someone who's blue, like the chicken. Uh, if their argument is green, then you want to attack them with red, and you know so on and so forth. They, they, everything has a weakness, everything has strength, and you don't. If they are red, you don't want to attack them with green because red is good against green, so you'll do less damage when attacking. So that's why you want to have one of each. But what I've found to be the most effective strategy for this is try to find one of each that has a very low command cost. This guy's command cost is six. The chicken is five, the granny is seven. Honestly, all the way till the end and even at the end, in my opinion, granny and chicken are two of the best characters you can have. Chicken is hands down the best because the command cost is so low and he has decent charisma, okay? Uh, this guy's not so great, but I haven't found a replacement. If you go around and talk to people on the streets, you might look, you know, recruit people who are perfect and all that. It might be a better person for this slot, but out of the people who showed up, this guy was decent. Uh, the main reason for that is, the reason why this is so important is, with low command cost, you can break their argument for free, basically. It only takes one attack to break their argument if uh, you are using uh, their weakness. In that case, you can just defend yourself forever and never lose the ranking or whatever when uh, doing the minigame. And then you can only gain if you can defeat them. And then you're just guaranteed to move up and not down, basically, if you can keep up. Uh, and then the other thing that you can do is you see I have this third guy. Well, there's one guy. There's one slot extra. So you have one for each type, but then you have an extra slot. You go, what do you do with the extra slot? Well, the extra slot, that's when it's okay to have someone with high command cost. On that extra slot, just find someone who has the highest charisma out of anybody you have. And in my case, it's this guy. He has 679 charisma. So what I'll do then is I will use someone who has low command cost and attack. And when you attack, it makes a multiplier. And at first it's 1.25, then it goes to 1.5, 1.75, then it goes to two. And so what I'll do is use someone weak until it goes to two. And if that guy still has a ton of HP, like if it's one of the really tanky guys later on in the game, then I'll start smacking him with this guy once the multiplier's been built up with the, like, so you use low command cost units to build the multiplier. Then once it's fully built, then you use the expensive unit for double damage. And even if, even if this guy is not strong against it, like if it's a, you know, if you're attacking someone that's red, it might still be worth it just because the sheer amount of uh, charisma that this guy has and you're already at the two times multiplier. So it may still even be worth it. If it's neutral, it's definitely still worth it. Uh, so if you're, you like in my case, I'll use this guy and we'll end up in a situation where I've got the two multiplier and the guy still has over half his HP. This guy's just not doing any damage. Then I'll start smacking with this guy once I get to that point. Uh, so yeah, and then tenacity. If you play this game right, tenacity is completely useless because all tenacity does is if you fail to break their argument, They'll attack your employee, and when they attack your employee, tenacity is just that employee's HP. That's all it is. So, yeah, if uh, tenacity, if you're doing it right, doesn't do anything. Uh, if you get attacked, though, a lot, if you're screwing up and not keeping up, then tenacity might save your butt. But generally, the most important thing is just charisma and one of each type and one strong guy. is the main thing you want to be looking for. Uh, that, I don't think I'm forgetting anything here. Let me look at properties again. Yeah, not really anything. You can go to property. You want to sell. You go to properties and you click one of these to sell it. And that's that's it. That's how you sell. If you want to look at the market without selling anything, you go to market and then you can just you know browse and see what's on the market. And uh, oh, and then I guess I should mention events will pop up sometimes after uh, business day, and the investment ones are almost never worth it. I accepted every single one just to see. I had one actually follow through and give me money out of like 15 or 20 that I accepted. So I wouldn't actually recommend them. They, they, and my, unless I was really unlucky, it was like a one out of 10 that they'll actually pay you off. In which case you'll just always lose money. Again, maybe I was just really unlucky or maybe I'm actually missing something. Maybe there's a mechanic that I wasn't paying attention to. I don't know, but it didn't seem worth it. 
The other one, though, is except for the very, very first business day or two, uh, for the rest of the game afterwards, if she offers you a commercial deal to do commercials, I think it's 5 million yen at first, and then later on it's 10 million yen. Uh, you should always pay that if you can. The reason for that is what the commercial does is for four business cycles, it makes all your businesses earn double the money. So if you get to the point where you're making two, if, if you're just making uh, 1.5 million yen per business day, at that point, the commercial will pay for itself. And once, once you get to like 5 million yen, then the commercial absolutely pays for itself because an extra 5 million yen every day for four days, that's 20 million extra yen at the cost of 5 million. Once you get to the point that I'm at, it's 10 million yen and in return for making me 200 million yen per day. So I get 800 million yen in return for 10 million. You know, so the commercials are insane. Commercials are just free money, basically. Uh, that's pretty much it. I think that's everything there is to mention. Uh, I guess I should say real fast out in the actual world there'll be random people you can talk to to get uh random employees most of the time you'll need to be like style level eight and things like that to recruit them once you recruit them they'll go into this recruitment area and you can recruit from any time like this chef guy i just picked him up earlier when i was beating the game and i could recruit him if i wanted i found him on the streets uh that's one way to get more employees if you want to do that it's not necessary at all to beat the game you can beat the game super easy without it but if you happen to run across them anyway, or if you're just trying to 100% the game or something, then, you know, you can go out and do that. That's a thing. I actually don't know offhand if you can find new businesses that are not on market. Uh, if they're, if you can, that'd be pretty cool. I never actually spent the time to look because it was not relevant for beating the game at all. Uh, last thing I'll mention is every shareholder meeting, if you beat it, you get free yen, which is a very good incentive to actually beat the management mini game. And I think I said in the beginning of the video, uh, once you beat the game in your rank one, every shareholder meeting that you beat, you get 3 million yen as a bonus. So basically, if you want to see her for an hour, like if I sat her for an hour, I could really quick rack up like 30 million yen or something like that. Uh, just sitting here, just going as fast as I can, day, end, day, end the day, end the day, end the day, and, you know, pay all my employees, do the shareholder meeting, repeat, and just do it as fast as I can. Just get crazy amounts of money. So I don't know, there might be a better way to make money in the game, but it's probably the best way to make money in the game there might be some better way when you go in one of those towers or something and do one of the late game dungeons or something but everything short of that it's the best way to make money in the entire game so hopefully you found this helpful uh hopefully that answers anything that you possibly could have wondered about this mini game uh if there's something i did not answer other than the shareholder meeting uh feel free to comment and if you want to know the how to beat the shareholder meetings more easily and the tips and tricks and stuff for all that uh look in the description to see if i've posted the video on how to beat the shareholder meeting i should be posting that hopefully right after posting this but hopefully i don't forget that and you know just forget to do it uh so yeah shareholder meeting tips that'll be a separate video there's a lot to talk about there it's a uh, pretty pretty rough game to play uh so yeah if you have any questions or anything that i missed on the general specifics of all this uh, feel free to comment i'll try to answer your question but yeah that's pretty much everything there is to the basics of uh, the business management mini game in Yakuza Like a Dragon.